Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I am going to continue with stations even though we had a very significant demise of our Kerbin orbit station. And that is because, well, they're lucrative. Um, well, at least the ones further away from Kerbin might be lucrative. And we still have all the possibilities offered by the other contracts associated with its supply runs and uh, replacing power modules and all this stuff that could give us more money. So we just need a station that's not going to glitch out. And so I'm going to try to send a station over to the moon. Now there's a stretch given our pad capacity. We barely got the station into orbit around Kerbin, but then I was trying to do it as a monolithic station with the entire first stage sort of still attached to it. So we're obviously not going to do that with the station going to the moon. We're going to have many little stages. And yeah, can we do it with a budget of 400,000? Well, we're going to find out and we're going to hope that we can proceed with other contracts associated with the bases and stations contract series. Uh, that's a contract configurator bunch. So it's a special contract pack. Uh, other than that, if we wanted to do contracts, we certainly have other things. Planning a flag on Minmus is still a thing. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll take those if, if we fail. I mean, then we'll really need money. So yeah, we'll go with this first. Uh, we probably ought to be getting some more science as well. But for now, let me see what I can cook up in the VAB for a moon station. Obviously, we have to fulfill the same requirements. We'll need a science lab. We'll need four crew. We'll need uh, the power, docking port, and all that business. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so, well, I've designed this thing to within an inch of our capabilities, really. Uh, we Our height is basically close to the limit. Our mass, as you can see, is really close to the limit, 140 tons. So once again, I'm using whatever I can here. And I've had to even put little baguette tanks on the side of this because otherwise it'd get too tall. And at least the fairing, I, I tried to make sure the fairing looked okay. But let's just start from the core here. We've got the hitchhiker storage container and the science lab per usual. I didn't see any point uh, doing a two-person cabin, even though technically the requirements uh, don't require us to have uh, quite as much capacity for crew as we have right now. Uh, we have the soul panels here instead of on the core as we did before. The little ECLSS modules are also over here. And we have the antennae, we've got those starfish relay antennae, and also uh, these relay antennae here. So we've got those, we've got docking ports on the side for supply vessels, we've got a docking port at the top there, and at the bottom here, and then we've got the life support tanks that we had before. So basically we have all the stuff we had before except for uh, most of the fuel tanks. We do have this fuel tank, this Bossard fuel tank, so we can't attach anything to it. It's a balloon fuel tank for efficiency. And we also have this fuel tank here, which has everything attached to it. And uh, we are using four of the spark engines. These are set to high quality. We sure had a lot of problems with engine failures last time, so I don't want that this time. We don't have a whole lot of mod propellant capacity, but this shouldn't be using mod propellant. It could store some for visiting vessels, but we'll just attach a module like that later on. And... Yeah, that's basically our station right there. So as far as the requirements, you know, we've got the solar panel, science lab. We didn't need need the cupola. We can support four kerbals. We got docking nodes, and we just need to put it in orbit around the moon and set it to vessel type station. And that's in a fairing. And then we have a Sarnus cryogenic fuel tank. And I picked this because it was wide. We don't even have fairings that are actually wide enough. That's why uh, this fairing base you can see is not wide enough to cover the entire stage. So I just had to extend the fairing out and sort of hash it out like that. Uh, but it's one of our bigger fuel tanks. It's uh, basically a Saturn I fuel tank. I was thinking of using this, these fuel tanks, but uh, they're actually heavier. Uh, based on the fuel that they carry then this one uh, for instance uh, if we switch this to LH2O uh, this is 60,000 uh, this is already 53,000 so I mean 
that is, there's also a height problem. It's twice the height of this, but this carries almost as much propellant as this does. So that makes this a lot better, obviously, especially since we have a height limit. Anyway, otherwise we'd have like a double Saturn one sort of deal. Uh, but we've got three of the Prometheus uh, Perseus cryogenic engines. So we're going for efficiency here because we've got the mass limit. This is the most powerful rocket we've gotten so far, I think. And then we've got the sec uh, the first stage, obviously, that's the second stage. First stage with eight of the Perseus engines, so basically it's a Saturn One-ish thing. Ish. Except it's all Hydrolox. And then we've got these boosters. And I couldn't, I wanted bigger boosters, but we couldn't put bigger boosters. I wanted maybe not three of them, but three of them is what we could do with our mass limit. So that is what we have. And yeah, I, I don't think the Delta V readings are especially correct or anything. But our hope is that obviously we get to orbit with this stage. That the, all this stuff down here is to get to orbit. And then we are going to use this to transfer. And that contains 2,169. We need 1,500 for the transfer. That leaves us with 600 to make orbit, which I believe should be enough. Uh, assuming everything goes well. <laughs> Uh, we've got a tiny reaction wheel on there, so there's that, and we still have the controller. And though, though we'll have to remember to set to control from this docking port while we are trying to transfer. And this costs a hundred thousand, so we are, uh, for success, not the advance, for success we would get four hundred thousand. So it's worth it, if it works. So there we are. Well, we could have a few chances with it. We aren't going to have any Kerbals. We will have communication as long as we extend the antennae properly. And this could serve as a base of operations for moon things, including rescuing Kerbals, which would be nice. So, yeah, it's actually more useful than a Kerbin station. We could get the science into the science lab and everything. We don't have shielding, though, which I'm a little bit worried about. Um... Uh, I don't know, uh, I mean there's the whole orientation thing, I really need to just turn off those stupid solar storms. Um, yeah, we could orient to the sun and make sure it stays that way while we're time warping, I don't know. Because uh, even if we put shielding, if there's a solar storm, they'll get fried, right? We know that. So... Hmm. I wonder how bad the shielding will hurt our Delta V. I mean, it's like if we put full shielding, that's like 300 meters per second. Uh, that's on the science lab, but then that's where we probably will store curls for the longest time. If we put half shielding, it's maybe 150, 160. It's not horrible. We could probably get into orbit around the moon with it like that, but. The benefit of the shielding I'm dubious about. Let's see. Radiation shielding. Interstellar. I think it's basically interplanetary numbers. So 277 days. And then let's say we have half shielding. One year, 52 days. It's not really that much better. <laughs> so. I mean, it does. it's not that heavy, but it's also not that much of an improvement, so... Alright, let's just go with what we've got here. It's a stubby sort of rocket. So our supplies are only half full, as before. Okay, throttle up, and ignition. And whoop, and launch. Well, we've got a lot of thrust to weight ratio. Okay. Max Q would be around here, probably. Okay, boosters out, and set. Ooh, that was dangerous. Yeah, still a little bit Max Q-ish. Might want to wait. If we ever use this again, we might want to wait for separating those boosters. 
And then obviously they needed to be shifted down a bit on the decouplers. I did have some auto strutting involved, but of course I do have Kerbal Joint Reinforcement as well. Okay, separation and ignition. Another boop. And our upper fairings. Alright, that's all okay. We have enough Delta V for orbit. These things only have one ignition, so we're not gonna take advantage of any Delta V that stays uh, sticks around afterwards. You might want to keep it on a deorbiting trajectory. Uh, I forgot to add more electric charge. We got more batteries. I just copied the other one and brought all the stuff, but I forgot to put the batteries. We'll have to. The, but the batteries caused problems before. We should just add it as a new vessel. I'm not gonna have the engineer slap batteries on. That seems to have caused a problem before. So we'll avoid that, at least initially. Just setting something to dock with it that has extra battery. Okay, well, let's get these starfish relay antennae out. Uh, well, I don't know why it's reading so little delta V up there now. Hmm. Was it lying about the delta V before? In the VAB? No, I'm worried. Okay, oh, I didn't want it to hang out. Okay, but we'll say that's the deorbiting trajectory. Okay, and let me just go undock there, undock, and control from here, and all right, you need to flip carefully, though. Okay, well, that's orbit, and I don't want to chance anything else. All right, they have 30 ignitions apiece, and plenty of burn time, in theory. And it is in orbit. Okay, well, let's see. And now it says 2,143, so I guess we'll go for the moon as long as it doesn't change its mind again. So... Okay, well, that's a good enough periapsis. Okay, comms... Well, we seem to be communicating through the... Well, uh, through Nye Island. Which I guess it's somewhere. Um, not there. I don't know where the line is going actually. But we've got lines going out. Oh, now it says Kerbin v Tereshkova. So that's there. That should be good for a while. I forget if the sparks provide power. I don't think they do. Nope. But we are on our way. And that's good enough for now. Let's go for CS for the rest. Let's take a look at what's happening at the moon. Oh, we're still pretty far out. Eh, maybe it's better to do a brief puff. Oh, if the spark engines. Okay, I'll take that. Alright, so 90 kilometers, basically equatorial or close to it. And just orient a little bit and hopefully we'll get power soon all right on to the moon okay we have entered Mooner SOI we should have comms at periapsis but our periapsis will also be in the dark oh or we won't have comms um, I don't know why we don't have comms. Mm, we should have line of sight back. We have power. 
We have line of sight back, we have power. Maybe there's just no ground station in this location right now. Great. Oh, uh, well, we, we picked it up now. All right, uh, I guess a brief window of not having any ground station. Now the electric charge is a problem. Uh, we'll have enough for now. On uh, normal orbit of the moon, I don't know though. And certainly when Kerbals are on board, this isn't enough. Okay, without further ado, ignition. It's a capture. Uh, we need to be below 200 kilometers, and I assume that's all the way around. And that's 200 kilometers. So, last but not least, name it a station. Hopefully red over here isn't the malfunction of some kind. I think, no, it doesn't seem like the sun coming out, I don't know. Uh, I don't see anything that's malfunctioned. Hmm. Okay. Rename vessel. Station. Accept. Okay, we've got our moon space station. It is not currently glitching out. I'm almost tempted to just uh, call it a day here before I do something silly. But we should probably send over a power module with more electric charge at the very least. I just want a small thing uh, maybe with some science, so that we can get the science lab started, but no peoples yet. No peoples yet. We'll wait for them to give us money for that. Okay, so just a small utility module to make sure this is safe in terms of power would be nice. Just out of curiosity, I decided to check on the contracts. We do have a send a crew to the moon station option here, and it's two, so it's not quite as bad. And we actually get the launch the Kerbin station contract again. So there's that. But all right. Evacuating a station we already did. They should have given us a contract so that we could have done that. Anyway, we, we did that really quickly. I'm just seeing if there's anything that we should send over to the moon, but I don't think so. We still haven't done the blueberries. Oh, sorry, the green sandstone. Definitely haven't done the blueberries, but green sandstone we need to do from Minmus, but yeah, no co no relevant contracts do I want to do. Okay, so I've decided that we would just keep it simple, and I'm gonna do the exact opposite kind of launch than the one I did before, the smallest possible that we could manage this, and so we've got, basically these are the biggest batteries that we have right now, I think. Uh, we just don't have too many batteries. There are capacitor banks, but this is the best we can do for batteries right now anyway. So just two of those, plus uh, there's some power in these solar batteries. We've got extra solar panels like that because I don't want to lose power. Uh, there's really tiny antennae here, and we've got the Oscar B fuel tank. Uh, and hopefully we're going to use some of this stage in order to start our transfer. Got plenty of ignitions with that Decker engine. But otherwise, the ant is there. We only have one, but it's high quality. And then we have the mop propellant tanks for docking. The RCS thrusters we always use are small enough for even this. So we have those, and of course the docking port. And yeah, normal controller. And there is the Decker engine for that stage. And a single swivel engine for our base stage. And that is it. These are actually two Eto 600 tanks. We haven't seen those in a while. And I've just called it Power Pack. So, yeah, and there's two of those Bell 240 BD liquid fuel tanks. Possibly there's another version of it that's longer. But anyway, I don't think so. All right, so we're just going to send it. Now, we do not have probe control here. Do we have that problem that I had before? I don't know. Hmm. I mean, the probe unit itself should have comms already. Okay, well, last time we uh, launched from the Tereshkova hex pad. 
and that worked out. Let's see if that works out here. What are I've just forgotten something with this? Yep, yeah, here at the Val Valentina Tereshkova hex pad, we do get connection. Don't ask me how that works, but we're like ominously surrounded by buildings here. But at least it's a small rocket and everything. All right, so throttle is still not working. Throttle up. This is um. I think there is some inclination here, but not not a whole lot. So just a slight complication. Okay, well ignition and launch. I don't know about the downrange connection though. Well, we are through the clouds. Okay, there was another layer of clouds. We lost comms. Well. So much for the hex pad. Okay, well. It's a bit of sun, and it's gonna come right back down again. I knew I should have just taken the win of placing the station into orbit around the moon and called it a day. <laughs> it was a short episode, but it would have been a good episode. I mean, technically, the last episode we filled the contract at least, but you know, I mean, why can't we were able to communicate with the hex pad earlier, and now we can't? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know why we suddenly have comm problems. We've had this sort of situation before, but... Where the ground stations just decide not to work randomly. Speaking of glitches... At least it wasn't an expensive rocket. Well, it's sure beating that terminal velocity stuff. Explosion. All right. Well, at least it's properly disposed of. Okay, I, I'll, I'll call it an episode there. We'll try and do something with the station next time. This clearly needs a restart. Maybe that'll help with the comms. And yeah, we got a station around the moon. That's what's important. And maybe there'll be Kerbals to rescue around the moon that we can store at the station temporarily or something like that. We will see what kind of operations we do next time. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.